one, two, and three. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to our channel. My name is Kika, and today I'm gonna be showing you how to knit the wishbone sweater that I have knitted three of. So this is a sweater that I already designed actually a year ago. So this is the first sample I made. I designed and knitted this or finished this while I was in Barcelona for the Barcelona Knits Festival and almost a year later and I finally have this tutorial ready for you. So the pattern has been already live for quite some bit so there are lots of projects and inspiration that you can go and check out. I'll put the links below on Instagram, hashtag wishbone sweater and then on Ravel you can go and admire people's projects of this sweater. I just finished my third sample of the wishbone sweater and I blocked it and today I am finally able to wear it for the first time. For the wishbone sweater you have two different versions. So the first version I made um, has a straight collar, so meaning there's no shaping. This is just a tube. And the second sample I wanted to try to give it some shaping so that it's a little bit uh, shorter here in the front than in the back. And that is done with German short rows. So in this tutorial, I'll show you how to shape the collar with the German short rows. If you prefer to do the straight collar version instead, and in the pattern you'll get both instructions for both, you can choose to skip that and just move to the next step. I'll put some chapters also below. But the German short rows just helps uh, with the fit a little bit so it doesn't come as high up. Uh, it looks really nice as well with the straight one. It's just a little bit of a, it was a small detail, but you can make that choice. And I will say about the German short rows, they might seem intimidating at first, but well, here in this video, I'll give you step-by-step -step a breakdown on how to do it. Um, and it's not really that tricky at all uh, once you see it. The wishbone sweater is knitted from top down and you start by knitting the collar. Then you can do the German short rows if you prefer or not. And then you continue in the round. Uh, and I'll show you here. So maybe it's better if I take this way. So you continue knitting in the round and you do these increases for the shoulders, as you can see here. So you have increases on every round. And when you just have it flat like this, uh, it looks like a very kind of slopey shoulder. But when you wear it, and I've seen it on lots of different people, it looks really flattering. So even though this might look a little wonky, you might think like, hmm, how is this gonna fit? Uh, trust me, it does look really nice once it is on your body. And after you've done that in the round, you separate for the front and the back and then there's one portion here that is knitted flat so we're at the front and then you do the back and then again the body is knitted in the round and then lastly we pick up stitches for the sleeves and we pick up some stitches here from the shoulders also that then get incorporated into this ribbed cable motif. I am currently uh, a little bit of a different size than normally. I am now seven months pregnant, so this one looks a little uh, different on me than normally, but I really love how soft this is. Uh, after I blocked it, I feel like it's softened up. It really opened up all the cables. So I definitely, if there's like one knit project that I would recommend that you wet block. So meaning that you, after you finish your project, you will put it in water, soak it, cold lukewarm water, for 10 to 15 minutes, then you squeeze out all the water and then you can do like a burrito uh, roll uh, with a towel to get even more water out of it. Let it flat to dry. <laughs> I really recommend with this one, just because the cables will open up so much and it will, I feel, improve the fit of the garment. All right, without further ado, uh, as always, I will put the link in the description below so you can go and download the pattern or then you can watch this video first uh, and you can go and watch all the inspiration also uh, on Instagram or on Ravelry to get some ideas if you would like to try this out and to get some color inspiration ideas and see how people have completed this project before. Um, and otherwise, I hope you'll find some value in this, get some tips and tricks and that you'll enjoy knitting the wishbone sweater. All right, let's begin. For my wishbone sweater, I'm going to be holding two strands of Knitting for Olive Merino together with one strand of Knitting for Olive Silk Mohair. And these are in the color uh, Nut Brown, both of them. And you can uh, use 
uh, any type of DK weight uh, merino together with one mohair or at least uh, this silk mohair or just a DK or even a worsted weight yarn, we're gonna be working on five millimeter. So US 8 needle. First, we are going to cast on stitches for the collar. I am going to be using a three millimeter, so that's a US 2.5. A circular needle. This has, I think this cable is 60 centimeters, so that's 16 inches long. And we're going to be using the long tail cast on. So the reason for using the long tail cast on is that it creates like a really, really nice and stretchy edge, as you can see here. And I'm going to show you how to cast on for ribs. So we're going to be working in a twisted rib stitch. So I'm going to show you how to cast on for that. All right, so begin by grabbing your yarn or yarns and we're gonna need quite a bit of extra here. So I'm gonna at least have, I think like a meter or like a proper amount <laughs> um, of yarn here. And then we're gonna begin by just working a slip knot. So I just twist them like this and bring my yarn through and then I grab my needle and this first stitch is going to be a purl stitch. And next we're gonna cast on using the long tail cast on method. So this begins with a purl stitch. So now I'm going to be casting on for a knit stitch. So I have my yarns like this. So this is my working yarn and that's my tail. And I go in with my fingers like this. And then I use my right needle and I kind of use my thumb here and then my index finger so I'm gonna go through this one and I'm gonna grab some of my working yarn, go back in through that loop and tighten. So I have now cast on for a knit stitch. Next, I'm gonna cast on for a purl stitch. So again, I have my yarns like this. This time I'm going to go from up and over instead. So I go through here and go through that loop again, take my working yarn and again, go through that loop and tighten. So let's do that once more. So now I need to do for a knit stitch. So I go under, so I go just through this loop, grab working yarn and I tighten. And now, cause I want to do a purl stitch. So I first go under here and then I go through this loop and grab some of my working yarn, go back in through that loop. And now I've cast on five stitches and then I just continue you can watch this on repeat if you need or slow it down. But essentially, this is the way I'm going to be casting on for my collar until I have the amount of stitches that I need. I need 112 stitches for, for my collar for size small. And if you get confused on what you just cast on, you can sort of see that the pearl stitches you cast on, they have like a strand, like a little bump here. And then the knit stitches have sort of a V. It's not super, super clear, but if you look closely enough, you'll see that this is a knit stitch and that is a purl stitch. Or if you get very confused, you can always just count from the beginning. So you know that your first was a purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl. So I need to do a knit stitch next. All right, when you have the amount of stitches you need, we're just going to join this to a circle. So make sure that you have all of your stitches that they haven't gotten twisted or anything. With the long tail cast on method, it's a little bit easier to see that they haven't gotten twisted. And then we're going to be placing a marker to mark the beginning of the round. And I usually like to place a marker that has a different color. For example, you could choose something like this or like that, so that you just know what your beginning around marker is, so that it's different than maybe the other markers that you're gonna use throughout this project. All right, and you are ready to start working the collar. So note for this pattern, we start with a pearl, and then we're going to do a twisted rib. That means that we were going to be knitting all the knit stitches through the back loop. So twisted like this, and then pearl one. So instead of normally you would knit it through the front loop like this. Instead, we're going to be knitting through the back loop. So we get this nice and defined twisted rib. All 
right, I have now worked my twisted rib collar, so I'm next going to show you how to do the German short row version. So if you are working the straight collar version, you will do approximately 22 rounds of twisted rib. So that's until you have approximately 7.5 centimeters in height. So that's approximately three inches. But because I'm working the German short row version, uh, I'm going to be stopping when I have approximately five centimeters, so approximately two inches in height. So I've worked this now 15 rounds, but you might have to work a few extra rounds or a few less. So just remember to keep a measuring tape handy. <laughs> and uh, next I'm going to show you how to do the German short row version. If you're not working that row uh, or that version, you can just skip ahead to the shoulder shaping. But if you want to see this, it's really, really simple. It's not at all as complicated as it might seem first. Uh, but if you'd rather do the straight version, you can just skip this part and I will see you back at the shoulder shaping. <laughs> All right, let's work the German short rows. Before we get into it, let me try to explain what the German short rows are. So until now we have worked in the round. So our collar, if we would lay it flat, looks something like this. So this is the twisted rib. And now to help shape the back so that that becomes a little bit more, we get more material, we're gonna do these short rows and we're gonna essentially be creating kind of like this shape. So we're gonna be start working back and forth uh, for 12 rows and then we have a 13th row that is sort of a little bit of a half row <laughs> in order to shape the neck so that's going to be get higher than the front here. So I'm going to show you what you need to know to do that. Let's start. I have my beginning of round marker here. I've pearled the second one just to make sure that this doesn't fall off and we're going to continue working with our three millimeter uh, so that's a 2.5 US needle. And the first thing that we're going to do is place some markers. So this is my beginning of our marker. I've purled my first one and depending on what size you're working, you might have a different stitch number, but I am working the size small. So I am now going to be the next 48 stitches. I'm going to be working in a knit one through the back loop, purl one until I have 48 stitches plus this one. So that equals 49 stitches in total. And 48. All right, so I have my beginning of round marker there. I purled one, then I worked across 48 stitches. Again, remember to check the pattern for your amount. And now I'm going to be placing one marker here. So I am placing one marker. And next, these next seven stitches are going to be the shoulder seams stitches. So I need to knit one through the back loop and then I repeat purl one, knit one through the back loop three times so that I have seven stitches all in all. And it both begins and ends with a knit one through the back loop uh, stitch. Two, four, six, seven. And then I place a second marker here. So these are now going to be the shoulder seam uh, stitches and these are the stitches for the back. All right, then we continue and then I purl one, knit one through the back loop. I purl one and next, instead of continuing, I am going to be turning the work. So now I turn the work. So that was our row one on the right side. Now going to be our short row number two. And this we're working on the wrong side. Short row number two on the wrong side begins with an MDS. That stands for make a double stitch. And it is very, very simple. So now if I would just continue working these stitches, uh, I would get sort of an awkward little hole or it just wouldn't look very nice. So you could seam that seam uh, very clearly. So that's why we do this double stitch. Um, and I would have my yarn here normally, but now I'm going to make a double stitch. So we're going to bring this working yarn so that it's in the front. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to use my right needle. I'm going to go in purl wise through this first stitch and I'm just going to transfer it without doing anything to it onto my right needle. And next, let me come a little closer. <laughs> next you can see, so I have this stitch is on the right needle and then you can see the stitch here below. And now what I want to do is I'm going to pull this yarn or the working yarn up so that I get the legs of this stitch below to sort of come up onto the needle. So I pull it up 
quite tight. So it looks something like this. And that's all you do. I've now made a double stitch. So I pulled up these two legs of the stitch below like that. And then I just continue. And now we're on the wrong side. So now we need to purl all the pearls through the back loop because we have that twisted rib on the other side that we still want to keep twisted. So all the pearls I'm gonna, instead of normally I would purl it through the front loop like this, but now, cause I want to do it through the back loop. So I instead going to locate that back loop, take my right needle through the back loop. Don't know if you can see this. So I go in through the back loop here and then I wrap my yarn around my needle like that <laughs> and bring it out again. And I've purled it through the back loop. And then I knit all the knit stitches and slip my markers and purl through the back loop all the way until the beginning of round marker. And then I will show you how to continue from there. All right, I'm approaching my beginning of a round marker. So I'm gonna slip that. And next, this is going to be now the second shoulder seam. So I worked all the back stitches here. There I have that shoulder seam that we already placed the markers for. Now it's the beginning of round marker. We're on the wrong side of the work. So I need to purl one through the back loop and then I need to knit one, purl one through the back loop for the next seven stitches so that I have seven stitches here for this other shoulder seam as well. And then we are going to be placing a marker. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then I'm going to be placing a marker, choosing a different color this time, like that. So place our marker and then I need to knit one, purl one through the back loop, knit one, and this is short row number two complete. So this time we're gonna turn the work around again. Now we are ready to begin short row number three. So we're back on the right side this time. And again, we're now gonna start doing a double stitch. So make double stitch. So this time, again, I'm gonna bring the working yarn between my needles so that it's in the front. Then again, this first stitch, I'm just gonna transfer it purl wise from our left needle to the right needle. And then I again use or grab this working yarn and I kind of bring it up and over and I pull it. So you can hear, you can really see very clearly that I get these two legs. So that's the double stitch that I want. So these are the two legs from the stitch below. And if I don't pull, it happens like this. So I want to pull it. So I have these two, two legs here and that's all. And then I'm ready to continue knit one through the back loop, purl one, slip all my markers, and I'm gonna now work this for the shoulder seam, for all of these back stitches, and for the shoulder seam on the other side, and I will meet you here where we're gonna purl this double stitch that we made on the last row. Now I'm working the second shoulder seam stitches, slipping my markers. Then I'm going to purl one, knit one through the back loop. And here now you can see this looks a little uh, wonky. <laughs> and that is because this is with the spot where we did the, our double stitch on the last round. So here you're just gonna treat this as a regular stitch. So we are just going to be purling all of this. So you have kind of a lot of yarn on that needle, but you're just gonna purl that. And then knit one through the back loop, purl one more, and that is short row number three complete. So then we're going to turn the work around again and work short row number four. So turn the work around and short row number four is again on the wrong side and it starts by making a double stitch. So again, I have my working yarn here in the front. I am going to transfer this one purl wise onto my right needle and then again, pull it up. So I get this stitch that is below up on that needle. And then I continue again, doing my pearls through the back loop and knit all my knit stitches until I get to my fourth marker. So I just work past all of these markers. All right, I've just slipped my beginning of round marker and now I'm going to be working the second shoulder seam stitches. All right, I worked all my stitches. I had my beginning around marker there. There are my shoulder seam stitches. Then I've knitted one, purled one through the back loop. And here you can see we have again 
that double stitch what we made on the previous row. So now I'm just going to knit that. So I'm just going to treat these two loops that I have as one stitch and knit them all as one. Like that. And I've resolved my double stitch. Then I purl one through the back loop and I knit one again. And that is short row number four complete. So now I'm going to be turning the work around again. Now you know everything you need to know to work these dormant short rows. So you know how to make a double stitch, you know how to purl a double stitch or how to knit a double stitch. So that is all you're going to do. Um, you're going to continue so that you have made in total 12 rows of German short rows. And for the last row, you kind of do just a short one <laughs> until you come to the beginning of round marker so that we're ready to start the shoulder shaping at the beginning of the round. So now this is what your color should look like when you work the German short rows. So you can now see that we've created more length here in the back. So this is going to be now the front and you can see sort of where we work the short rows, but even this maybe looks a little wonky right now, but then when we create the yoke, you're not going to be able to see this. This is all going to smooth out really nicely. Um, so yeah, that is the German short rows now complete. So let's now continue to the shoulder shaping. All right, and next we're going to work the shoulder shaping. So if you just work the German short row version, you already have these uh, stitch markers for the shoulder seams. But if you work the straight color version, on the first round, you're going to do um, a round with placing these markers. So it's the one that is called the setup round. And this is only done for the straight color version. So you're going to grab your five millimeter needle. And that's also going to do for all of the versions. We're going to now switch to a five millimeter. So that's a US eight needle. And I am using a 60 centimeter long cable here in the beginning. So that is 16 inches and might have to switch to a longer cable after a while. All right, let's begin working round number one. So I am now going to switch to my five millimeter needle because I worked these German short rows. If you did the straight color, you have already switched to the five millimeter needle. So I've worked already my pearl here because I had this beginning of round marker. So I'm just going to transfer that onto my five millimeter needle. I'm going to pop my beginning of round marker right there for a moment and then I'm going to pop it back. So the round one is very, very simple. Essentially, we're just going to purl out the pearls and knit through the back loop all these other stitches. But you can already begin following chart A in your chosen size. And you can see here that on chart or round one, we don't have any increases yet. If you work the German short row version, you'll find a note that says resolve all double stitches on this round. So this just means that when you get to a double stitch, so like here now I have a clear double stitch, I'm just going to purl that. So treat it as a regular pull stitch and then just keep moving on. Um, and you have two double stitches on this round and both are purl. So you're just going to purl those and treat them as normal stitches. Here I have my second double stitch. So again, I am just going to purl those two strands as one stitch and then continue until I've worked the entire round. All right, I can just put that aside, my three millimeter needle. And now I'm just going to be popping back my beginning of round marker so I know where my round begins and ends. So now I've transferred all of the stitches. So they are now on the five millimeter needle and you should now have a beginning or a round, round marker, an X amount of stitches here. Then you have two markers here. Those are the shoulder seam stitches here. These are the front stitches and those are also the shoulder seam stitches. And next we're going to start working chart A across both the back and the front. And we're going to be doing increases on each round always um, where we have our markers. So next round, we're going to start, we're going to make one left, knit all of these according to chart A. And here we're going to make one right, work our shoulder seam stitches. Here we're going to again make one left, work across all of these stitches according to chart A, and then make one right. And that we're going to be repeating for the entire shoulder shaping 
section. Oh, that's a mouthful. <laughs> Shoulder shaping section. So let me show you how to work those increases. Make one left. So this is the pattern referred to the next round, but for chart A, this means that we're gonna work now according to round two. And you'll see that round two in each size begins with an increase. So we're gonna make one left. And you're gonna locate the strand between your needles. So between the stitches, you have this strand here. And I'm going to use my left needle and I'm going to go and take this strand onto my needle. I'm gonna go from the front like this. So I went in through the front here of that strand, picked it up on my left needle, and now I want to increase. So I'm going to be knitting this strand. So I'm going to treat it as a stitch and I'm going to knit it through the back loop like this. Grab some yarn and I've increased one stitch. Now I'm going to show you what happens if you, instead of going through that back loop, if you would just knit it through the front loop like this, I have a big hole here and I don't want that. So that is the reason for when you're doing these left leaning increases, you want to knit it so that the strand gets twisted. So I made one left. And then it's just following round two of that chart A, which means that we're gonna be purling all the pearls and knitting all the twisted stitches, knit them through the back loop. All right, I've knitted across all my back stitches. So that's where I made one left. And now I am at my marker. So here I'm gonna make one right. And it's very easy to remember because when you have the marker coming up next, I'm gonna make this because I'm on the right side of the marker. So I need to make one right. So this time, again, I locate this strand that I have between the stitches. So this is this strand here. And this time I'm gonna bring my left needle behind. So I take this strand of yarn on my needle, but from behind this time instead. So I have it like this. And this time I want to knit it from the front because now if I would just knit it like this, again, you see, I get this big loop. I don't want that. So that's why I need to knit it in a way where it gets twisted, which means I knit it from the front like this. And then I've increased one. Then I just go ahead and slip my marker I work these next seven stitches, which are my shoulder seam stitches. Just knit one through the back loop, purl one, until I get to my next marker. And then we're just gonna repeat this. So again, this is round two of chart A. So again, it starts with make one left, go in through the front here and knit it through the back loop, increased one, work across all of these stitches until I get to my next marker and there I make one right. All right, at the end of the round here. So then again, I have my marker here to the right. So I need to make one right. So we're gonna go in through the back here and knit this strand through the front. So I've increased one there as well. So I've increased four stitches all in all on this round. And we're gonna continue in the exact same manner. So for each round, you're always going to be increasing four stitches. All right, there's that round complete. So for the next round, so this is now going to be round three of chart A. Again, you can see now, now the strand is a little bit smaller, <laughs> but it's still there. So you're gonna again, just grab your left needle and grab that strand. And again, knit that through the back loop. And then for this next one, your chart will say, but you want to keep always this twisted rib intact. So now I need to know I have a pearl there. So I need to knit this through the back loop. And similarly, this stitch that we just created. So on the next row, I'm going to be purling that. So just to keep this exactly this twisted rib pattern intact. And next you're just gonna continue that until round five. And on round five is where we start to do the twisted cables. So I'm going to show you how to do those next. All right, I am now ready to start begin working round five of chart A. So I have my beginning round marker here. And first I'm just going to increase one. So do that, go in through the front, knit it through the back. And then I need to knit one through the back loop, purl one knit one through the back loop, purl one. And now we are ready to work our first four by three left leaning 
uh, cable. So these next seven stitches are going to be in our left leaning cable. So for this you do need a uh, double pointed needle or a camel needle. I'm using this one is from Coconuts. It has this really cool like magnetic feature so I can then have it here um, when I'm not working and I also have my row counter here but then I can just place it here. So first for the 4x3LC I'm going to be transferring four stitches onto my double pointed needle or cable needle three and four and I'm going to be keeping them in front of the work. So I just let them be there. Next I'm going to be the next three stitches I'm going to be knit one through the back loop. I purl one and I knit one through the back loop. So three stitches all in all. Then I transfer the last stitch I have here. So from the right if you would count that's stitch number four. So I transfer that onto the left needle first. So that's a purl stitch. Then I go ahead and purl that. And then I work these three stitches now but from the right. So I knit one through the back loop, purl one, and knit one through the back loop. And now you can see that I created this twist so they are leaning now to the left and I've kept the twisted rib intact so we have knit one through the back loop, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl. So that doesn't get messed up when we do this. Then I purl one and next up we have the 4 by 3 right leaning cross. So again gonna use this double pointed needle or this cable needle to help me out. So I'm transferring these next four stitches and now I'm going to keep them in the back. So I'm already keeping everything here in the back. So I transfer one, two, three and four. So four stitches and I keep them in the back. Then the next three stitches I work and here you want to tighten it a little bit so you don't have any gaps. So I'm going to knit this through the back loop, purl one, knit one through the back loop so that I've worked the next three stitches. And then again I'm going to here from my double pointed needle I'm going to take this last stitch. So from the right that's the fourth stitch so the last stitch and I'm going to be transferring that onto my left needle and leave the others still on my double pointed needle for a bit. And then where is my yarn? Mm -mm -mm. And then I purl that stitch Oh, cuts a little tight. I purl that one and then I am ready. So I need to again just adjust my yarn a little bit. Then I am ready to work these three stitches that I had on my cable needle. So I knit one through the back loop, I purl one and I knit one through the back loop. So there you have it. So now you can see so you should have one cable that goes in one direction and the other one in the other. Depends a little bit on which size you're working but they should always go in alternating directions. So you will always work a left lean and then a right lean, left lean and right lean or the other way around uh, until the end of your round. All right so I have now worked round five across my back stitches. So it should look something like this. Depends a little bit on which size you're working. So you're going to be repeating these on every eighth round. So if you just follow the chart it's really easy to keep track of or you can use a little row counter and if you get really confused you can always uh, count how many stitches you have and just match that up on the uh, stitches of each round in your chart. Um, but yeah this is essentially everything you're going to do. Always remember to do your increases here at the start and the end of each of these rounds of, of the sections and you're ready to go. All right I have now completed the shoulder shaping so I have worked according to chart A completed all of the rounds of chart A with the increases here. Then there were a few rounds with no increases. So I've done uh, chart A in my size small to medium, so 38 rounds. And this is what it looks like right now. And next we are going to work the upper body. To work the upper body and shape the armholes, we're basically going to work the front and back separately, back and forth. 
Row number one on the right side. So first it says we're gonna remove our beginning of round marker. Then I'm gonna work according to chart B across all of my stitches until the next marker. So basically I'm just gonna do exactly what we've been doing. I'm gonna purl all the pearls and knit one through the back loop for all the knit stitches. Now I've worked all my back stitches from the beginning of round marker to my marker. Then I'm gonna be removing this marker and next we're gonna place all of these front stitches and both shoulder seam stitches onto a holder. So I'm gonna be taking my stitch wire and just transferring all of these stitches for the front onto this while I knit the back stitches. Here I have my marker indicating the shoulder seam stitches so I know I need to transfer all of these as well. Now I have both my shoulder seam stitches, so the seven stitches here and all the stitches for the front on hold, which means I can now work the back, back and forth according to chart B. Just gonna put these small loose knots here to make sure I do not lose my stitches. So next I'm just gonna go ahead and turn the work for row number two, which is gonna be now on the wrong side. So I'm gonna basically be working chart B back and forth and on every wrong side row, it is important to remember to work all of the purl stitches, purl one through the back loop. So we're gonna purl one through the back loop, which means that instead of purling normally from the front loop, I instead take my right needle from the back loop and purl it to keep this twisted rib stitch intact. The next step is just working chart B across all of these back stitches for X amount of times. It, this will depend on what size you are knitting. And after that, we're gonna cut the yarn and then we're gonna start working the front stitches. Now the upper back is complete. So I have worked according to chart B four times all together. And next we're gonna work the upper front in exactly the same manner. But first we need to put some of these stitches on hold. So we have all of the back stitches we're gonna put on hold and then seven shoulder seam stitches here for both shoulders. You can use a bunch of different things for this. There are these smaller stitch holders that look like a big safety pin that you can use or just a smaller little stitch wire or scrap yarn. And then you can even use a five millimeter needle to just have them here. Um, I'm gonna use a variety of things. So first I'm gonna start by cutting the yarn, the working yarn, leaving a tail. And now I'm just gonna transfer all of these stitches that I've just worked for the back onto a holder while I work the front next. I'll place my back stitches on hold and next I'm gonna place these shoulder stitches on a hold and I'm gonna use a different holder just because they're different length. Five, six, and seven. So all these stitches until my marker, I'm gonna place on this little safety pin. All right, so now I have my shoulder seam stitches on hold and my back stitches on hold. Once I've done all that, I can go ahead and transfer the stitches for the front onto my working needle. And then I'm gonna start working the front exactly like we did the back. So the armhole, the front part essentially, without working the shoulder seam stitches. Grab some new yarn and again, work exactly like we did the back. So the first row is a right side row and I start to work according to chart B back and forth. And first starts with a purl and knit one through back loop and so forth. And I'm gonna be repeating chart B all together four times for my size. Now I've worked all of the front stitches as well, back and forth, four times all in all for my size. I've worked chart B and I've ended on a wrong side row and then I've just done one of right side row again. So this is my front and I've ended up here. And now we're going to be joining 
the front and the back stitches to work the body. So first I have worked all of my stitches on the right side after I worked them back and forth. And now I'm here at the end of my front stitches and now we're gonna be casting on stitches for the underarm. So I'm gonna be placing a marker and I'm gonna be casting on seven stitches with the backwards loop cast on method for the underarm. Four, five, six, seven. And then I place another marker to mark these stitches. Then we're gonna be joining the back stitches. I have them on a stitch wire. So first I need to transfer them onto my five millimeter needle. All right, I've transferred all of my back stitches onto my five millimeter needle. Oh, and drop my stitch marker. So now we're ready to work in the round. So here I just work across my back stitches according to chart B. Now I've worked across all of the back stitches as well. I've come to the underarm. So I'm gonna be placing again a marker. Then I'll cast on again seven stitches with the backwards loop cast on method for five, six, seven. And then this is now going to be my beginning of a round marker. So I'm gonna place a different type of stitch marker here, just so I know where my round changes. And that's it. Now we're ready to begin working in the round according to chart B in your chosen size. So we're gonna be working chart B all of the rounds now according to the right side instructions for X amount of times. And then we're gonna do some decreases here right along the underarms that I'm going to be showing you. The lower body is shaped by some decreases at the side seams. I've also worked one sleeve already, but I wanted to show you the decrease rounds. There are three decrease rounds all in all, and the same decrease rounds are then repeated for when you are working the sleeves. So here you can kind of see what it is uh, going to look like. And I wanted first to show you decrease round number one. And this one you do after you've repeated all of the rounds of chart B twice. So decrease round number one. First, you're gonna work round one of chart B to your marker. So I'm almost at my marker. So I'm just going to then work all the way to my marker. Then I'm going to be slipping this marker. Then I have knit one through the back loop and I have a purl one. Next, I'm going to be working an RDDL, which stands for ribbed double decrease left. And this one is going to decrease two stitches. So you do need a little double pointed needle or your cable needle. So first we're gonna slip one stitch purlwise from the left to the right needle. So we're just gonna slip this first stitch purlwise from left to the right needle. The next stitch we're gonna slip onto our cable needle and we're gonna hold it in back. So I'm gonna slip it over there and I have it at the back of my work. Then I'm going to be slipping the next stitch from my left needle purlwise to my right working needle. And then I'm going to be, now the stitch that we had here in the back, we're gonna move that over to the left needle. So essentially what you do, you want to have now so that you have two knit stitches here on my right needle and then two purl stitches here on the left needle. So we've just organized or reorganized these stitches a little bit. Then we're gonna return both of these slipped stitches onto the left needle. And now we are <laughs> essentially ready to do what we need to do. So now we're just gonna SSK first. So I'm gonna slip one knitwise, slip the second one, the second knit stitch knitwise. And then I'm going to be inserting my left needle and then I knit them together. So I've done my SSK here. And then for these two purl, I'm going to purl them together. And that is it. Now our ribbed double decrease to the left is complete. So now our decrease round number one is complete. So now you're just gonna work chart B and then we're gonna do decrease round number two. 
decrease round number two. So I've worked chart B now. Uh, this is where we did the first decrease round and now I'm going to do the second decrease round. So we're going to do exactly as it says in the pattern. So I've worked across here all my stitches until I get to my marker here. So I'm going to knit one through the back loop, purl one until I come here to my marker, slip that marker. And then I'm first going to do an SSK. So I'm going to slip the first stitch, knit twice. So I go in from the left side of this stitch, slip it and slip the second one as well. Slip, slip. And then I insert my left needle into these two stitches like this, wrap yarn around my right needle and take that through. And I've decreased one. Then I knit this one from the back loop. And then I knit these two stitches together. So again, on decrease round number two, we decrease two stitches. And this is what it's going to look like. And next we're going to work again chart B until all of the rounds one to eight are completed. And then the last step is we're going to do an SSSK. So we're going to all of these knit together. All right, so now we work decrease round number one, decrease round number two, and now we have the final decrease round, decrease round number three. So here again, you're going to work up until the marker, slip your marker, and here these stitches for the underarm, we're going to SSSK. So we have three stitches, we're going to make those into one stitch, so decrease two stitches. So I'm going to slip all of these knitwise, go in from the left to the right. So I've slipped three stitches knitwise from my left to my right needle. And then I just insert my left needle into all of these, wrap some yarn around my right needle and bring that through. And there you have it, an SSSK. So now we've done all of our decrease rounds. So here, that's where I have my underarm. And now we're just gonna continue working chart B as long as you desire. So the pattern says how many times or repeats you have left, but of course you can customize the length to fit your preferences. I worked my entire body, then I switched to smaller size needle, a three millimeters, a US 2.5 needle, and just did a twisted rib. And now I've been binding off using the Italian bind off method. And I have a tutorial for that, so I will link that in the description below if you want a really step-by-step -step video on how to do the Italian bind off. Now I only have a few stitches here left. And one thing to note about this is that when you're gonna work the Italian bind off for this hem, it starts with a purl knit. So I actually started by, so I left one stitch here, so I have a last stitch is a purl stitch instead so that I could start with a knit stitch. After you've completed the body section, we're gonna work the sleeves. And I've already done one sleeve here, so we're gonna be picking up stitches here for the sleeve from the armhole. And then we're gonna work in this cable that we already know. And then we have some decreases and these decreases are exactly the same as the underarm. So let me show you. So here you can see I've picked up stitches for the sleeve and I really tried to make them correspond with the body stitches here, the knit or the twisted knit stitches. And then we have some decrease rounds here and we do have one just twisted knit stitch that goes all the way through. So that's a little bit different than the body decreases because so in the body we had three of these knit stitch columns and on the sleeve we only have one. To work the sleeve I'm gonna use a shorter cable so this is a five millimeter US 8 but a shorter cable and then I'm gonna have three stitch markers so a beginning of round marker in a different color and then two stitch markers. These don't have to be removable but I happen to have those. All right, grab some new yarn and then we're gonna start here in the middle of the underarm to pick up stitches. So here is the middle, but I want to first pick up a stitch from a twisted knit stitch. So I'm gonna go in here and grab some yarn and pull that through. So I'm gonna be picking up four stitches here from the underarm. So I have one, two, and I'm going through this twisted knit stitch again three and 
four. All right, I picked up four stitches, then I'm gonna place a marker. And then I'm gonna be picking up X amount of stitches here from the side. And I'm gonna pick them up in a way where I get this really nice twisted knit stitch column here visible. And here I am picking up one stitch per row. All right, I picked up stitches here from the side and you can see that we have this really nice twisted knit stitch column here visible. Then we come to these stitches for the shoulder that we've had on hold. And now because we have the working yarn here, we're gonna have to work these. So in order to do that, we're gonna just transfer them onto the working left needle. All right, I've transferred my shoulder stitches onto the left needle. So now I can go ahead and knit one through the back loop and purl one for all of these shoulder stitches. And then I can continue picking up stitches here from the other armhole edge. All right, now I've picked up stitches here from the other edge as well. Then I'm gonna again place a marker before picking up four more stitches here from the underarm. The first is going to be a twisted knit stitch. Three and four. And then here I'm gonna place the beginning of round marker so that I know where my round begins. All right, so there we have now our picked up stitches for the sleeve. Next, you're gonna be working the sleeve stitches according to chart C, but nothing really changes. It's the same cable that we've done. Then you have the decreases and I've worked mine. I think I worked chart C altogether 10 times. This of course can depend if you want a longer or a shorter sleeve. And then I've switched to a smaller size needle here for the rib or the cuff and then just done again an Italian bind off. But you can of course use your preferred bind off method. I have blocked my sweater and now it is finally on me for the first time. So as I said in the beginning, I definitely recommend that you do wet block your wishbone sweater just because these cables will really open up and relax. So the fabric just becomes softer um, and I just feel like it improves the fit of the garment. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and that you enjoyed it and you got some valuable tips or confidence to tackle this project. Uh, you can use the hashtag wishbone sweater if you decide to post something online or you can add your project on Ravelry. It's really nice to go and see all the different colored wishbone sweaters in there. And as always, you can come and say hi. I am over at Kutava Kika on Instagram. Hope to see you there and thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye!